Hey, fabricators. All right, we've got a great one. This came from our How to Pass Parameters from Pipelines to Notebooks in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, Vivek Delcar uh, asked, is it possible to be able to pass a parameterized notebook from one notebook to another, or can I only do it from a pipeline? Well, Vivek, yes. Yes, you can do this from notebook to notebook, and that's exactly what we're going to do today on Tales from the Field. Wake up. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good. If this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits. That's a video where we get inspiration from you, the community, working with a product group or a customer, and then we share it with you. It's one of these great videos right now. As a matter of fact, as we previously covered, this was a question that Vivek had specifically on, can I pass a parameter from one notebook to another, or can I only do it via a pipeline? Well, I'm gonna answer two questions today. The first question is, can I pass it from notebook to notebook? Which is yes. The second is, can I pass it from a pipeline to a notebook and then pass that parameter from a pipeline to another notebook? The answer to that is yes as well. So stay tuned because before we're done today, we're going to hit both of those questions. I'm in my Microsoft Fabric workspace and you can see I've got a couple notebooks here, a calling notebook, a called notebook, a main notebook, and a pipeline. We're going to get to all this, but what we're going to do is we're going to start out uh, by setting up our environment. So I'm going to create a Delta table called my table one. You can see I've got two columns in there. I'm doing a my ID column where I'm inserting a value of 10. And then here's a test sentence as stuff. It's two columns, my ID and stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to show how we can insert data into this. I'm going to do a quick uh, test to validate that my data frame went through my table is created and I can see it is. Now we go to our called notebook and you can see I've got parameters already in place over here. Uh, my notebook parameter for my ID, which is 20, uh, my new sentence for stuff, which is testing this out. Now here's the syntax we're using to write using T-SQL to do an insert statement. And you can see I've got two values, bound one and bound two. And I'm using bound one for my notebook parameter, bound two for my new sentence. Now this is in the notebook that we are going to call from another notebook, but we're going to start out by testing this to validate that this works. So we're going to go ahead and run this and we're going to set our parameters so we've got our default values in place. And then once we have this in place, we can run our second cell to be able to insert these values into our Delta table and validate that everything is working on this notebook before we try and call it from a main. I'm going to switch over to my SQL endpoint. I'm just going to do a select star from this table. Uh, and you can see, here we go. Just fine, inserted, testing this out. This is what I expected. Now we get to the complicated stuff. Let's go to another notebook. This can be our main notebook. You can see I've got two new parameters, in param and in news. Now the way I call this is I use the MS Spark Utils notebook run, and I'm saying called notebook because I'm specifying the notebook we're calling, the timeout, which is 90 seconds, and then here's the two parameters. You can see in the text above, I've got it if you only want to pass one parameter, but for two parameters, we'll do a notebook param, we set the variable, we do a comma, and then we define it again, and we pass the next parameter. So let's test this out. Let's go ahead and instantiate our parameters, and then we'll run this. This should call, and this should put in our value 100, and here is some text. And now we've called it from one notebook to another, and magic, here we go. We've already called a notebook from another, and we've passed parameters, but let's take this a step further. Let's go to a pipeline. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to set this up from scratch. I've already got my notebook in place. Just like in our previous videos, I'm calling that main notebook, and I'm setting up my parameters. This time we're inserting value 200, and we just pass this from a pipeline to a notebook to another notebook. That's gonna be our text. So now that I've got this configured, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. When I run this, it's, I'm gonna fast forward through time for us to be able to speed this up, but this should be a pipeline calling notebook one, my main calling the called notebook two. Let's go over and test it. Oh, there's that fabric magic that I love to see. You can see we passed this value from a pipeline to a notebook to another notebook. So resoundingly, the answer is yes, we can pass pipelines uh, and we can pass parameters from a pipeline to a notebook to another notebook. We can pass parameters from a notebook to another notebook. Um, 
Very, very flexible stuff. Wonderful the way that we've got fabric working. Well, you know where we want to keep this going? Down in the comments. Is there any questions that you have? Anything that isn't clear? Please sound off. We would love to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. And Vivek, thank you for your question. Take care of each other and be good out there. Bye. Be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations. I 